In America, everyone counts, and the 2020 census is how that great promise is kept. Respond today online, by phone, or by mail, and help inform hundreds of billions in funding for education, health programs, and more. Shape your future. Start at 2020census.gov. All right, folks, folks, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has called for the House to return session this week. She wants them to vote on Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney's Delivering for America Act. This act would prevent changes the Trump administration has made to the U.S. Postal Service. Now, Senate Majority Leader, Minority Leader Chuck Schumer has urged Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to reconvene the Republican-controlled Senate to act on Maloney's bill. Now, here's the problem. McConnell has already made it clear that the senators are not coming back until September 9th. So even if the House reconvenes and passes this bill, the Senate may do what they've done on so many other bills, and that is completely ignore it. That's why they call him Graveyard Mitch McConnell. What we have seen uh, over the past couple of weeks has been shocking and stunning as we've seen postal box postal boxes shut down, uh, removed, uh, the, the disassembling of mail sorting machines in post offices all across the country. Now, the new postmaster claims they're trying to achieve efficiency, but that makes no sense when we are about to ramp up and are going to have massive mail-in voting. Now, Donald Trump, he, of course, uh, has been uh, a huge critic of that, uh, criticizing so many aspects of mail-in voting, except absentee voting, when it's really the same. Joining us right now is uh, Maryland Congressman Kwaezi Nfume. He's a member of the House Committee on Oversight and Reform. Remember, of course, he took the place of the late Congressman Elijah Cummings, who was the chair of that particular committee when he was alive. Um, Congressman Nfume, this is... It really makes no sense because you have Republicans who are saying that this is all about the Postal Service trying to get a bailout. But what I don't understand is when I hear people say that this is also because there's been low volume of mail due to coronavirus, we are about to see a dramatic expansion of mail as a result of mail-in voting. So why would they... What, what's, the, what's the sense in removing mailboxes, shutting down and disassembling mail sorting machines in August, knowing full well next month it's about to ramp up because of voting. Well, Roland, first of all, thanks for having me on, and thanks for always keeping it real. This is a two-punch fight from Donald Trump. The first is to get the Postmaster General, who is his crony and his donor, to slow down mail delivery so that people will lose confidence in the mail system. Every year for the last 50 years, the American public has shown a 90% confidence level in our post office. So this is to get rid of that by slowing things down. And so you are right. He took out sorting machines and disabled them. He uh, found a way to refuse overtime. They're collecting mailboxes around the country left and right, throwing them on the back of pickup trucks. And they have a reduction in staffing that he himself has implemented. Meanwhile, the president, in every other speech he gives, talks about why you can't have confidence in the post office and therefore you shouldn't have mail-in balloting because it will never get delivered. They were in cahoots. Uh, Mr. DeJoy needs to step down. I call for his resignation today. He's going to be before our committee in a week or so. There's nothing that he can say to justify the fact that seniors, and veterans can't get their prescription drugs on time in the mail, that small businesses are hurting because they can't get invoices in and out, that average citizens trying to pay bills have to worry now about their bill not being received on time, so they have to pay a late fee just because of this foolishness. DeJoy, meanwhile, has said he wants the post office to turn a profit. Well, the post office is not a business. It's a service, which is why it's called the American Postal Service. And since 1792, it's been an independent agency. No Democratic or Republican president until this one has played these kind of games and made it into a political football. The thing that that, that really jumps out, um, the, the, the thing that really jumps out at me on, on this whole deal is that when I begin to, again, listen to 
uh, th th this whole breakdown here. I mean, you have Donald Trump, who literally is even now saying that he's now complaining about drop boxes. Drop boxes. Mm -hmm. By saying, he sent a tweet out saying, some states use drop boxes for the collection of universal mail-in ballots. So who is going to collect the ballots? And what might be done to them prior to tabulation? A rigged election? So bad for our country. Only absentee ballots acceptable. Now, what's strange about this is that Ohio, they actually have it in the law where each county has a, has a drop box. This is a Republican Secretary of State who has said they have not had voter fraud. So right. he is alleging something where even Republicans are feuding the lie. Yeah, this is what the, the thing that happens when you tell a lie over and over again. It's going to start looking like the truth to somebody unless it's attacked. And that's why this has to be attacked over and over again. You raised a very good point earlier when you said in the middle of the COVID, as we are moving toward a major election and things have slowed down anyway because of the virus, why would you slow down the Postal Service? It's like trying to get across a drawbridge that's opening up. Instead of going faster, you slow down. It makes no sense whatsoever. And that's why DeJoy needs to go. Uh, people need to, to consider this and act against the United States and to rise up in communities as they are doing all across this country. This is a blatant power grab. I mean, you can't get much more blatant than this and then lie over and over and over again. So it's important that people see through it and understand that we've got to protect our post office because it is ours. It served us well over the years. It's not the best, but it's the best that we've got right now. And the $25 billion in funding that we have put into the uh, HEROES Act to fund the post office, to take care of the uptick in ballots and everything else, as you said before, continues to be in the graveyard of Mitch McConnell, who refuses to bring it before the Senate for a vote. Uh, the, not only are we seeing just the locked boxes, we have heard from a variety of people, uh, people who worked at post offices, who have said mail is stacking up. I mean, it, it is as if, the, the, I mean, what, what we're hearing from people who actually work in these post offices is that it is a deliberate attempt that they are that, that they have been told not to count to slow things down. Th that to me also uh, is, is is what is very uh, strange here. That here you you would have a situation where you would think that folks would be wanting um, a mail delivered. Uh, I saw one tweet from a person who said they sent a letter um, three weeks ago, a letter that normally takes three days, and it still had not arrived. Well, the postal workers and the letter carriers have been the one source of information that we have depended on. And thank God, they work hard to do what they have to do. They take their jobs very seriously. And they had to start blowing the whistle on what was going on because it was so offensive to them and everyone else. And, you know, one of the things that this bill on Saturday that will be voted on does is to roll all the way back all the measures that were in place on January 1st of this year which means no more removing, but rather replacement of sorting machines, no more denying overtime, no more of reduction in the staff or any of that. But this horse has been out of the barn too long, unfortunately, and it's important, so very important, that people not let it depress their vote in November by thinking that the post office can't be trusted. Donald Trump can't be trusted, and DeJoy, the postmaster general, uh, is just like him. So. Uh, fortunately, shows like yours and others where people are able to talk about this, hear about it, and then spread the word within their own communities and families helps. But we need everybody on board and to recognize that this is not just about slowing the mail down. This is slowing the mail down and depressing the vote also. Uh, we're showing some photos right now that various people um, uh, have placed uh, on Twitter uh, of these locks being put on, on boxes. Uh, and... I, I, it, again, I, I don't know about you, I don't recall seeing uh, this happen. Now, conservatives are already saying that in eight years, 14,000 mailboxes were removed under President Barack Obama uh, and Vice President Joe Biden. The difference here is that all of this is happening literally while Donald Trump is complaining about mail-in voting, two, he has actually said out of his own mouth on Fox that, yes, 
I am going to withhold the money because of mail-in voting. And three, we are 79 days away from an election. But that's election day. We are 20 days away from voting starting in North Carolina. Exactly. And 30 days, perhaps, at the latest, away from people who haven't registered, who have to register by then, to be able to vote. It's draconian. It is unfair. It's the sort of thing that I don't care what Republicans say, they know in their heart of hearts is wrong. Some of them will be joining us on Saturday to pass this bill to roll these measures back. Others will not. But Donald Trump has to bear the blame here. And trust me when I said it's a two-part punch, the first thing is to get people to think that they can't have confidence in the postal system. And then the second thing is to use that reduced confidence to reduce the turnout across America where people are voting by absentee and voting by regular ballots. And by the way, Donald Trump has voted in the last seven elections by mail-in ballot. And he won't tell that, but that's the truth. All right, Congressman. Quite the info, man. We surely appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you, Roland. I'm going to bring my panel right now, Dr. Avis jones Weaver. She is political analyst, Teresa Lundy, principal founder of TML Communications, Mustafa Santiago Ali, uh, former senior advisor for environmental justice at the EPA. Mustafa, I'll start with you. Uh, you worked in the federal government. Uh, the USPS uh, is uh, is part of the federal government, but it's sort of weird, um, you know, in terms of in terms of how they work and how they how they govern. And one of the things that also that we have to deal with, and that is this here, uh, that the Board of Governors governs the Postal Service. And the reality is that Senator Bernie Sanders stopped President Barack Obama from appointing several members of the Board of Governors, which allowed Donald Trump to be able to appoint them. They actually are the boss of the Postmaster, and had those Obama appointees been in place, they actually could have put controls and stopped a lot of this from happening. Sometimes folks uh, end up shooting their own self in the foot. You know, um, for folks who say that they're progressives, for folks who say that they want to make sure that things are fair and that there's access for folks to be able to fully participate in the participate, you know, in participating in the in the system. You know, you you got to think long term beyond your own personal needs and gains. Um, and when you don't do that, we have these situations that we find ourselves in. We have a situation where we have voter suppression. This is, you know, no different than the poll taxes of the past, you know, trying to limit people's opportunity to fully participate in our democratic process. We all remember the stories being told to us about how many jelly beans in a jar, how many pieces, uh, how many bubbles in a bar of soap. All of that was used. And ever since this administration has come in, Voter suppression has been one of their hallmark pieces that they tried to move forward on. You remember they put these commissions together early on. Many of us were out there protesting against them. I believe it was Chris Kobach and the rest of them who were trying to prove that there was this, you know, all these folks who are voting across the country who weren't allowed to vote and weren't supposed to vote. And then, you know, everybody has proved that that was false. So this is just another way of, of 45 trying to rig the game. Uh, so that he can at least stand a chance. Um, and, you know, folks are, are hip to what's going on and people are going to push back. Uh, folks will try and utilize the courts, but we got a short time frame that we have in front of us. Um, but, you know, folks need to get educated on how we can actually navigate this uh, and, and make sure that people can vote and that, you know, that we are supporting our postal workers who have always been there, even in this COVID-19 moment. You know, they still deliver the mail where other folks were able to stay home. They were still out there doing their jobs. Um, this is the thing here. The uh, J Jason Johnson first uh, tweeted this uh, on August 14th, Avis. Uh, go to my iPad, Henry. He said, we know Trump is trying to destroy USPS by having DeJoy remove sorting machines, cut back hours, and increase the cost of stamps for mail-in ballots. We also know DeJoy can be removed by the USPS BOG. But how do we get here? You may not like the answer. And he said the BOG is supposed to have nine members, but they operated with an emergency committee and without a quorum for years because several Obama appointees to the committee were blocked. Who were they blocked by Senator Bernie Sanders? This is a blog post on Daily Cost. 
Uh, what happened was uh, one of the folks who worked for Senator Sanders tweeted, uh, the postal nominees Bernie blocked five years ago were white Republican men picked by Mitch McConnell who wanted to gut the Postal Service, privatize it, and slash jobs, pensions, and health care benefits. The only one who benefits from these slanderous and baseless attacks is Donald Trump. Yet, when uh, they looked into it, President Barack Obama nominated five people, three Democrats and two Republicans. And the Senate Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee, which has jurisdiction over the Postal Service, has approved all five. But the full Senate has not taken up the matter because a senator, believed to be Bernie Sanders, has placed a hold on their nominations. They indeed were five white men, but the reality is they still were, it was a hold there. This is, and no, now I'm not blaming Senator Bernie Sanders for this. What I am saying is that this is a part of this story that comes to the oversight which allowed Donald Trump to come in and then begin to just dominate uh, this whole process. Something stinks, Roland. Something stinks. I mean, I, it, it makes me wonder why, for example, Bernie Sanders has voted against all Russian sanctions. I mean, there, there's a lot of things that are happening here that we don't know, that's not in plain view. And what's happening right now with the post office let's just be clear, now that we are here, uh, is an orchestrated, an orchestrated coup. That's exactly what's happening right now. Because if you look at the uh, surveys around how people had planned to vote, around 75% of Democrats had planned to vote by mail. Only about 23% of Republicans had planned to vote by mail. And so what you have is you have somebody in the White House that has put his cronies in office, his crony in office, uh, his cronies in office, uh, who now are unchecked because of what had happened previously. Uh, and now we're here at a point where, um, you know, you can't trust. I mean, even if tomorrow the money came flowing to the post office, can you even trust that his cronies wouldn't do everything they can to continue to gum up the works? Of course they would. I mean, that's what they've been doing since the minute that they've been in there, you know? And so it is it is a coup that we are experiencing right now. And it's, it would behoove uh, the Democratic Party and for it would behoove also activists and voting rights uh, activists all across the nation to help to educate people about alternative ways that they can have their votes heard. Uh, I know for me, I plan to vote in person early because I personally do not trust that whatever I mail will actually get to where it's supposed to be on, on time. There are some people who are thinking of just taking their, you know, hopefully getting their ballot and turning it directly into the Board of Elections. But, you know, this thing is so complicated right now because at the same time that they have um, specifically sabotaged the post office, they have also, when I say they, I'm referring to the Republicans now, uh, they have let loose a series of lawsuits across the nation in various states in order to challenge various ways that people can have their votes counted preemptively, you know, even before this election. So you have to be careful if you're going to do that, for example, just take your ballot, don't take, you know, your whole neighborhood, for example. So, you know, there, there are, this is a very um, nefarious situation that's going on here. And I hope that uh, one day there will be someone who will lodge a criminal investigation to what's happening because, quite frankly, people need to go to jail behind this. Teresa, here's what you, what was going on here. Donald Trump is consistently trying to uh, sow seeds of discontent and doubt. Um, he attacked this whole idea of mail-in voting. Republicans said, dude, what are you doing? We normally lead when it comes to this. Uh, you, had the, you had the Republican in Georgia who said, if we allow mail-in voting, Republicans will not win any statewide races. Uh, so you have individuals on record as saying, uh-oh, if we allow mail-in voting, we're screwed. And so, so, you, so you have that. What he's trying to do is he, he basically wants to stop people from even thinking about voting. He wants to say, hey, guess what? It's too much. Uh, it's dangerous if you vote in person. Now, all of a sudden, he's saying now it's voter fraud. It's this constant so seeds, so see, oh, it's, it's broken, it's rigged, whatever, because what he's doing is he is trying to set up a way to fight the results because he know he's losing.
Absolutely. And you know what? That is probably the most detrimental part about what's going on right here, right now in our American democracy is our right to vote. I am looking for progressives, those people who follow Bernie Sanders, because I also follow the tweet, you know, that went out, you know, saying that, you know, Bernie had something to do with it, but not all the way. But we have to be honest. If the dialogue right now coming from Donald Trump is about voter suppression, and that's essentially what it is, then I am really looking towards the state governments and local government commissioner's office to really step up their infrastructure in order to ensure that the voting either in mail or in person is solidified. So it gives, you know, uh, voters the opportunity because, uh, listen, right now we are all masked up. We are, um, you know, sanitized. We, we are putting on our gloves. And we are going out there to the grocery store. And we're going out there, you know, to the shopping malls because they're open. And now the movie theaters have now opened up, um, you know, with caution. But as much as we're social distancing, those plans are in place. So there is, you know, we are, I believe once we get to the November election, there will be the opportunity where I believe there will be standards that have been met um, in order for people to come in and vote responsibly. I think essentially when the primary vote happened, I know here in Pennsylvania, there was social distancing guidelines. There was bring your own pen. There was, you know, uh, you, you know, barely, you know, speaking, you know, it was more so high and by. You know, but I think those are the, the type of in-person interactions that will, you know, bring because of the conspiracy theories that are coming out of the White House are trying to, you know, um, stop the voting process in general. And yes, make the case for post the election, but you can't make the case if people are going inside to vote. So if you can go to the supermarket, you can go to vote. And I think that's part of the message that the Democratic Party is missing. Well, check this out. Uh, so Jim Jordan of Ohio, Republican, he tweeted this. Uh, here we go to my iPad. If you can protest in person, you can vote in person. This is, again, what they want to do, Mustafa. We saw this in Wisconsin, how they fought the Democratic governor at every turn to force people to be able to, vo to vote in person. They did not want uh, massive mail-in ballot. I remember the video uh, of the idiot, um, one of those idiot statewide officials standing there with a hazmat suit on, goggles, and a mask saying, and gloves, hey, it's safe to vote. Dude, you look like you're about to walk into uh, 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 a hut with, uh, 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 or a building that's filled with people with Ebola. I mean, that, that's just how, how idiotic it is because they want, voter suppression is about how can I keep people from voting? How can I put barriers in the way to stop them from voting? That's what we're seeing right here. It's been about chaos. This administration has focused on chaos. And by doing that, they figure they can separate folks, they can better control folks, they can minimize people's participation in our democratic process. And this is just another example of trying to create chaos and fear. This administration feeds off of fear. That's why they de, you know, they dehumanize and they demonize uh, people continually. And now they're trying to do the same thing with the opportunity to vote. All right, folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. As our community comes together to support the fight against racial injustice, I want to take a second to talk about one thing we can do to ensure our voices are heard. Not tomorrow, but now. Have your voices heard in terms of what kind of future we want by taking the 2020 census today at 2020census.gov? Now, folks, let me help you out. The census is a count of everyone living in the country. It happens once every 10 years. It is mandated by the U.S. Constitution. The thing that's important is that the census informs funding, billions of dollars, how they are spent in our communities every single year. I grew up in Clinton Park in Houston, Texas, and we wanted, to, we wanted new parks and roads and a senior citizen center. Well, the census helps inform all of that and where funding goes. It also determines how many seats your state will get in the U.S. House of Representatives. Young black men and young children of color are historically undercounted, which means a potential loss of funding of services that helps our community. 
Folks, we have the power to change that. We have the power to help determine where hundreds of billions in federal funding go each year for the next 10 years. Funding that can impact our community, our neighborhoods, and our families and friends. Folks, responses are 100% confidential and can't be shared with your landlord, law enforcement, or any government agency. So please, take the 2020 census today. Shape your future. Start at 2020census.gov.